All right, welcome to the introduction to a Zentangle. So for those of you that are in fourth grade learning about a Zentangle, this might be a review from third grade. Um, third grade, this is all new. Um, so no matter what, uh, we're sharing the same video here, but um, it's going to introduce you to um, visual texture. So texture being something that you can feel. Um, so like carpet, you can take your hands and you can feel carpet. Um, sometimes brick, you can go and you can feel how rough brick is or sandpaper is. So visual texture takes that um, feeling and it puts it onto flat paper. So what we think, you know, brick looks like, what we think sandpaper looks like, little bumps all over the place. Although when I touch these, I can't feel anything. It's visual, so it's using your eye to see what you think texture looks like. So to me, this could be a type of sandpaper, this little circle here. Um, if it was actual sandpaper, I'd feel every one of those dots, but it's visual, so it's on printed on the paper, so we don't actually feel anything. So. Visual texture is all about making something look a certain way um, as if it would have texture, right? But it's also lines, uh, different color black and white um, made to, to make a visual design as well. So you're going to have two different resources here. One is our Zentangle practice sheet, and this has multiple triangles for you to practice. And then we have the um, Zentangle, our visual texture example um, sheet. And this is filled with different examples. The hard part is all I'm asking it, you to do is find 12 and do them on this inside of these triangles. But you have to figure out how do I make that look and how do I take this circle or this circle and put it into a triangle. So a lot of problem solving and figuring out how you start and how you figure things out. So that is what we're asking you to do for the practice. Um, if I look at this and I don't realize, if I zoom in, And I look at that and I say, oh, that's cool, but I don't really know how to start. And, I, but I still really wanna do it, but I just don't get how the, um, how do they, did they make triangles first? Did they make circles first? How did they do it? Then that's not one that you wanna start with, okay? So going back, zoomed out here. Let's find one that is pretty interesting, but also pretty self-explanatory. So we are going to look at this one right here. This page is a great page um, with a lot of pretty self-explanatory Zentangles. So on this sheet, right here, I got both of them in the camera. I'm gonna do this Zentangle and I'm gonna put it into this triangle, okay? So how do I start? What's the first thing that I see? And the first thing that I see are actual lines, okay? Yes, I see all these little lines going this direction, but I'm looking at, I gotta have these lines that go horizontal. I need to have those figured out first. Okay, and then how do I take this square design and put it into this triangle, all right? Well, it's really not that hard, but you gotta decide, all right, how, what direction do I want those lines going? All right, so I'm deciding that I'm gonna go across this way. All right, so I'm gonna make lines that are all evenly spaced like this. Yeah, 
and I'm going to go all the way down. Again, trying to keep them all what's called parallel, meaning the same space from here to there as from here to there. Really important vocabulary word. going slow and also staying inside of my triangle shape. All right, last one. So now I have the first step done. Now I've taken something that's going this way and now I've put it this way. That's still okay. Then what you do is I think the next step is adding these to every other row. So I could start down here and work my way up, or I could start here and say this one's going to be white, and this one's going to have those lines. Then I skip one, and I work my way down. Skip one. And what's really important with this design is that it's nice and clean. These lines are also equally spaced and that they go all the way down from this line all the way down to the next line. And what I want you to notice is that these are going to take time. If you do them right, I could slop this together and get it done in half of the time, but it's not going to look like it should. Okay. And if I want it to be even darker, like it is on the sheet, then I would put my lines even closer together inside of these sections. Okay. So I would continue that going every other all the way down. All right. So looking at these and saying, how do I start them? Yes, we see a black square and then a white square, but what I want you to see are the lines. So I made a vertical line, a space, another vertical line, another vertical line, and then I did horizontal lines. And then I started with this one maybe, and I colored it black, staying inside the lines. Then I skipped one, colored it black skipped one, colored it black. And then I went right underneath the one that's black and I said, nope, that one's got to stay white. And I went this way and I colored this one black, skipped it, colored this one black to make that checkerboard look. Some of you are going to say, well, this one's really easy. Debbie Thompson, please call the office. Debbie Thompson, please call the office. And then sometimes you get interrupted with an announcement while you're making a video. Um, but you might say this one looks really easy. It's just little dots. Well, it is easy, but all these dots are equally spaced. They're all the same size. They're not shapes that end up looking like this, where I call it a C. Okay. They went all the way around and they connected it. Okay. So again, you're showing us as teachers that you can take something from this sheet, you can look at it and you can recreate it into a triangular shape, which you're probably gonna find more of on your uh, leaf project, okay? So you're gonna do, I'm gonna zoom out. You're going to do one, two, four more on this side, and then a total of 12 if you have enough time Otherwise, six that are your best. So if you really take your time and you do a great job and they all look great and you only get to your sixth one, then those are the six you're going to do on your LEAF project. If you go really, really, really fast and you get all the way to 12, well, then we're going to look at what six are your best. And that's what you're going to put on your LEAF project. Hope that helps.